Good morning. This week we're going to be talking about different prints and printmaking techniques and what they kind of mean in the antique estate auction world. My name is Jason Roski. I'm the, owner of the, I'm the owner of the KC Auction Company here in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, we, we sell a lot of artwork and a lot of that are prints and related. So let me go ahead and just share this on my page real quick. Uh, share, because people like to see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Share now, friends. Awesome. So what do we mean when we say prints? Obviously, there are a lot of different types of prints. There are a lot of different qualities and techniques to different prints. And they can mean any one of a hundred different things, depending upon who you're talking to and why. When we're talking about prints and the prints that we generally sell and have a fair amount of value, fall into one of several different ranges. Uh, there, are, there are etchings and engravings, wood blocks, lithographs, serographs, uh, and then there's photographer and things like that. I'm going to talk about a few of those today. Obviously, we're talking about the history of artwork and printmaking. That's, you know, there have been encyclopedic volumes written on just singular topics in the print world, make, printmaking world. We're going to talk about a few different uh, techniques today and what kind of things you want to look for and what makes a piece more or less valuable in the secondary market. Let's start talking about, uh, where should we start? Let's talk about wood blocks and lino cuts. They're kind of very similar but different. Uh, wood block prints, lino cut prints are the same kind of technique. But basically when you're making a print, you have an original image that you're trying to reproduce on paper to sell in larger quantities than the singular painting, drawing, or watercolor that you can make as an artist. And so one way to do that is if you uh, make wood blocks or lino cuts. And what's the difference between a wood block and a lino cut? It's really the, the material that you're using to carve into. A uh, lino cut is basically carved into linoleum or something similar. And wood block is basically an image carved into wood. And you're basically printing the high spot. So you're cutting out the background and you're printing the high spot on a piece of wood. So let's take my hand. If we carved out this area here, um, but these three fingers, when you would ink them, put them down, and you would have a th you know three lines where the fourth one was missing. So the ink is going to be where the image was, where the board, the uh, the plate, wasn't carved away. It's going to be the flat surface that's remaining after you cover everything up. And so you only have one layer that you can print with there, um, and so it's very limiting. Uh, you can do a multiple stage. You can do, you know, colored wood blocks where you have, uh, say, three, four, five different plates that you ink in different colors, stamp on the paper, and you have to, that's a much harder process than a singular, obviously. You have to line them up, make sure that when you press down the black and they go to the red or the white and the green, that they line up where you want them to and they make sense in the overall scheme of things. Same thing with a linoleum, a lino cut. So you're carving away the relief areas and you're leaving the printed surface. Um, the other, most other printing techniques work in just the opposite. Um, engravings, etchings, um, they work that the ink goes into the area that's carved away. And so let's talk about engravings and etchings. They're both, generally they both work on a copper plate. And if thanks for watching for all you kind of tuned in, uh, if you have questions, go ahead and post them. I'll try and respond to them as we go along. If uh, you have questions, comments, or concerns, please do that. Uh, hit the like button, share button. Let me know that you're watching. I appreciate all the people that do watch this. I hear comments all the time after the fact. But engravings and etchings are, are a very similar process. And basically what those are, for the most part, you start with a copper plate. Um, and then you etch away the surface that you want the ink to be pressed from. So you have a copper plate, you carve out the area, you can get a little bit more fine, obviously, with copper. You use a tool called the Burin, B-U-R-I-N. Uh, it's obviously hard and steel, but you can slice the pattern, the design, into the copper plate. Then you smear the ink on that, and you push that into a, a piece of paper, and the ink basically transfers from the, in, the ridges of the plate into the paper. Uh, the biggest challenge with that is if you're using copper, it's a soft metal. If you're trying to produce quantities of prints, the copper actually wears away. 
And so this, this technique has been around since I think the 15th century. It's been around a long time. Um, and so there was a, a time when copper and steel plates were used. But in the 1850s, when silver plating was kind of being uh, created and being more, modern, more mass produced and uh, the, the technology was in place to make that something that could be replicated, uh, people realized that you could do the same thing to copper and so they were steel facing, what the, the term is, they would steel face a copper plate. And so you'd have the copper plate, thanks for watching Adam, they would have the copper plate, they'd carve away the pattern, the image they want to have produced on the paper, and then they would steel plate it. And so you have a copper sheet with a thin layer of steel which gives it a lot more stability. And so it could be used a lot more often. That's why you see in the 1860s, 70s, and 80s, 80s a huge production, a huge flourish of engravings and etchings because the technology was there that you could produce them in a larger scale with the same tools. You could do one engraving on a plate and it would last for thousands of prints as opposed to dozens or hundreds of prints. And so you get a lot more use out of the same tools, be more, you know, more efficient. Same thing as using robots for something today. You can do the same routine over and over and over again, uh, get more work out of the same resources. So what's the difference between an engraving and an etching? Uh, basically an engraving is, us is, is engraved by hand, by somebody sitting there with the burin engraving the pattern into the copper plate. Uh, etching it uses acid to remove the metal. So, so what they do there is they take the copper plate and they cover it with wax, because wax resists acid. And then they t take away the areas of the, of the plate that they want the ink to adhere to with a needle, basically an etching needle, and it scores, takes off the wax, it scores the metal, and they dip it in acid, and the acid removes the metal, giving relief areas, and it produces a different texture than just a straight engraving. Uh, if you look at them under a microscope, it looks almost like the surface of a moon. There's a lot of um, texture to it, and there's a lot of depth, different depth, than you would with uh, an, an engraving. Uh, quick note on an engraving, the deeper the line, the wider the line, the darker the ink, obviously. The larger the relief area, the more ink that's going to hold, the darker that's going to be on the plate when it's, uh, on the paper when it's pressed into it. The other thing to look for for engravings and etchings, more so than any others, I don't have anything within reach. Uh, when these plates are pushed into the paper, it's not just like this. It's really pushed in there with a the mechanical uh, structure or a lot of weight. And so it produces, actually it will compress the paper. And you can see around the edge of the print uh, an indention, a relief into the paper. And that's one way to know that you have an etching or engraving is because of that compression of the paper. And you'll see an outline around what you're looking at. Uh, Photogravure is a similar to an engraving, or to an etching, I'm sorry, but it uses a gelatin-based product to resist the acid, and it's a much more difficult uh, uh, medium to use. And so it, uh, you see them, they, there are companies that have made them and done well, but it's a more challenging process, and so it wasn't used as often. Cool, I've got a little something I can show you real quick. I just realized. So the other thing you see is on stone like this. These are uh, printing blocks. And these images, this is from an old newspaper here in Kansas City. And uh, Lone Star Commission Company, you can see. So all this black area, this was engraved into the stone. And the ink would, they would take the ink, apply it, scrape it so it was flat. And then they'd press the paper into that for their advertising because everything was done like that by hand back in the day. So that's what we're looking at is that uh, the, that's a kind of a plate that you would see. The material they used to make that plate is, is different. But that's what it was. All right, with the last few minutes, we're going to talk really quickly about lithographs and seergraphs slash silk screens. Lithograph is one of the most commonly seen printing techniques. Uh, we see a lot of these uh, because it was a, it's a, there's artistic influence, there's artistic uh, um, components to it, but it's a way to more rapidly produce a painting, a print than most any other uh, way to do so. And essentially, a lithograph takes chemicals, um, oil-based chemicals, and the, you know, oil and water don't mix. So if you have oil-based chemicals and you apply a water-based type paint, uh, the water, the, the ink will avoid the oil and produce the image that you want to have produced. 
and it's been used for quite some time. Uh, it's obviously very effective. It's very economical to produce pieces that way. And so you see a lot of lithographs out there in the marketplace. And uh, we see them a lot. More often than not, you'll see them pencil signed and numbered. So what makes a lithograph worth more than just a poster? Um, basically, it's the idea that uh, there is a little bit more technique and quality assurance in that type of a process. And more often than not, when, some, when an artist is producing a lithograph, it's in a limited run, a limited quantity, and more often than not, they will sign around the image in pencil and then number it and maybe title it in pencil as well. And so you have that artist's input and actually touching the piece of paper as opposed to a print uh, that they don't. And we've seen lithographs that were produced the exact same way without a signature and with a signature. And obviously the piece that's signed by the artist is worth significantly more than if it's not. Um, because people like to have that connection to the artist. Last thing we're talking about is silk screen and seergraph. I'm just looking down at some notes, folks. Um, and silk screen and seergraphs are very similar to each other in that they pass the ink through a screen of some sort onto the paper. Um, and silk screen t shirts are really popular right now. You see a lot of different t shirt punk companies around the country using this technique because it's a really easy way to produce a lot of t-shirts quickly. And you have a silk, generally silk or another kind of cotton or another kind of type of material that you remove enough, pa enough fabric textile that you can pass ink through it. So you have, a, you have the ink there, you apply it, you roll it on there, and it, the ink passes through your screen onto the paper or the, whatever you're printing on top of. Uh, one way to tell a silk screen or a serograph from a lithograph is that the ink sits on top of the paper. Because of that printing process, it's uh, thicker, it doesn't go through the paper, it sits on top of, it dries into it, of course, but it's, there'll be texture there, you'll feel it. With a lithograph, it actually kind of it sits more inside the paper and it's, it's more flush with the, the surface of the paper. The other one is a much more new technique, is gicle. And that's basically what, it's a French word meaning spraying of ink. And you can reproduce a lot more color this way. Uh, the, you can produce up to 1800 dots of ink per inch. So in an area you know, that big basically, you have 1800 separate dots. So it looks a lot like a painting. It has a much more painterly look and feel to it. Um, there's been a lot of it's, it's a pretty labor intensive process, but it's also very reproducible. Um, you can produce a lot of giclés in a small amount of time. And you'll see, we're seeing a lot of companies selling a lot of these. Uh, they are giclé, that's exactly what they are. But we have found that the secondary market for them is nowhere near as strong as a lithograph or a serograph or a silk screen or a wood block or something along those lines. So thank you all for watching. Uh, we always like doing these every week and hopefully you enjoy watching them. I know that uh, we, we cover a lot of topics. If you have something in particular you have a question about, please post it here or drop us a direct message or an email, info at kcauctioncompany.com. Give us a phone call at 816-283-3633. Next week, I will actually be in Florida again. I know I was just on vacation, but this time I'm going for work. The National Auctioneers Association Conference and Show is next week in Jacksonville, Florida. I will be speaking on content creation on a panel, and so we will not have a specific time for our Behind the Gavel with Jason. I'll be posting updates on my Behind the Gavel with Jason page. Uh, so if you haven't followed that yet, please do so. I'll be on that quite a bit next week, uh, giving updates through the week as to what I'm learning, who I'm talking to. I might even interview some auctioneers and people from around the country, kind of just get a different flavor for what's going on in the industry in different parts of the world and different uh, uh, people I admire and appreciate and hopefully I can get some people to agree to do that but again if you have questions comments or concerns let us know if you're interested in selling something please let us know it's been an incredibly exciting week here at the auction house uh, I picked up picked up the other day a really nice collection of jewelry and silver uh, our current auction is doing very well we had a near record turnout for our open house yesterday and we're excited about where that leads for our consigners and we have a lot of interesting things coming up including uh, I don't want to say much yet, but I was at a photo shoot yesterday for a magazine article. So when we have a little bit more timelines and, and more information on that, we'll be sure to share that with you as well. 
Again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let us know, and we will see you next week in Florida.